Alright, let's do this. I think Shovel Knight doesn't need that much of an introduction. Retro-style game that gives off the feel of some NES classics, successful Kickstarter game that lived up to what people had expected, and paid homage to 2D platformers of the past, amazing soundtrack and gameplay with four different adventures to run and jump through. What is there to say about it? Oh boy. From cut content, development history, and some fan theories, Shovel Knight has a surprising amount of stuff to unearth underneath the surface. All of this has been compiled into this iceberg image I have made. For those who aren't familiar with these images at this point, somehow, iceberg images catalog obscure, weird, or even creepy bits of trivia and theories related to something. The most popular iceberg image is the one about Mario 64, but there have been countless others made at this point. I decided to try and dive into this sort of format, and found two original iceberg images for Shovel Knight, plus a third that combines the previous two. However, some of the entries on them just seem to be joke entries after doing some research on them, so I decided to create my own iceberg image by borrowing heavily from them and adding some of my own stuff that I think should have been included. Today I will show that iceberg, explain everything about it, and put something on this channel after so long. Also, shoutouts to Spectral Fineries for reviewing my script after it collected dust for so long. Without further ado, let's dig into that starting layer. Fishhead. You knew this would be here. It is one of the most well-known easter eggs in the game series. In the armor outpost of Shovel of Hope, there is a chance that Fishhead will run by who looks like Shovel Knight but with a Fishhead replacing the helmet, hence the name. It's shown up in other places, such as a hidden costume in Showdown, part of a Shovel Knight collectible statue. Not much else to say about it, Fishhead is just neat. Trio of Knights Through the campaigns Shovel of Hope, Plague of Shadows, and Spectre of Torment, we learn that Shovel, Black, and Polar Knight all were part of a group of some sort. They all have dialogue in these campaigns where it's shown that they knew each other at some point, and in the ending cutscenes for Polar Knight, there is some connection made as well. Polar Knight broke some sort of code of honor by joining the Order, and there is some distance between Shovel and Black. They all share similar traits, such as weaponry, moves, and horns on their helmets. It makes you wonder how a campaign with Black Knight or Polar Knight as the protagonist would have gone, Maybe it would have been a prequel, and show the three working together. Propeller's Rose During every fight with Propeller Knight, he will throw his rose out when he is defeated carrying on the trend of a story boss having something unique fall off of them, with the exception of Tinker Knight. However, the rose is not present in the encounter with him during Spectre of Torment for an odd reason. It is then shown in King of Cards that King Knight can steal the rose, which is called the True Love's Rose, from Propeller Knight, who kept it in a chest on the world map at a location called Lover's Vista, which triggers the fight against him. Cooper, after a game of cards, presumably gained ownership of the rose, and then returns it during the ending of Spectre of Torment. Bard is based on Jake Kaufman. It's just that simple. The Bard's dialogue was written by the game's composer so he could take on his personality and as thanks for composing most of the game's music. Shovels have been used in combat. This is in the sky since knowledge of Shovel Knight is not needed for this. There have been many accounts throughout history of shovels being used in combat such as during World War I for trench warfare, and getting hit with a shovel would cause some sort of damage as it's a stick with a bit of metal on one end. Of course, it would hurt. It is an unorthodox weapon, but still effective. Fairy Glade The Fairy Glade is a secret area accessible in King of Cards. In the Void Crater, where Mr. Hatch's shop was previously, you'll find a horse named Horizo. Talking to him after activating a Decree of Rejuvenation to prevent you from dying, King Knight will awake in the Fairy Glade and be welcomed by Madame Meaver. You are then free to explore the Glade, encountering fairies that resemble the main cast of each campaign, and be able to pick one to be crowned the Fairy King. King Knight will protest, stating he wants to be the Fairy King, 
before then waking up in his secret room at home. This is the only way to enter King Knight's room without using an heirloom of some sort. It is also worth noting any propeller rats encountered after entering the Fairy Glade, but before exiting the game, will have edited sprites depicting them with fairy wings, and the chosen fairy appears in the game credits. This area will be brought up again in an entry much deeper on the iceberg. Shovel Knight Cameos It's very well known at this point that Shovel Knight has appeared in so many video games over the years. Runbo, Move or Die, Runner 3, Rivals of Aether, Brawlhalla, Crypt of the Necrodancer, Ukulele, Fall Guys, Enter the Gungeon, For Honor, and Smash Brothers. To quote the YouTuber, Some Call Me Johnny, an indie game bingo card would have the Shovel Knight appearance as the fucking free space. This little blue knight has been everywhere, and this is only around half the entries on the fan wiki. The game's even big enough to have a cross-promotion with Arby's for some reason. Which brings us to... <laughs> cheat codes! There is an abundance of cheat codes in Shovel Knight to input. They were originally given to each Kickstarter backer who got the Super Deluxe Dirt, where each person would have one code, making their game more personalized. Eventually, people discovered how to access these codes either via random chance, or the codes being leaked. So now we have a plethora of codes to choose from, ranging from changing sprite size, starting with specific items, palette swaps, skipping stages, removing game elements like map encounters, checkpoints, and merchants, and just in general, a lot of different effects. Some of the most well-known cheat codes are the Buttmo cheat, which replaces any instance of Shovel and Knight with Butt, the Jar Jar Binks code, which makes dialogue sound like it came from the Star Wars character Jar Jar Binks, activating Japanese localization changes, removing the sepia filter in memories, and having Plague Knight have a walk cycle reminiscent of Richter from Castlevania. There are over 400 cheat codes in the official cheat code database, and I would recommend using one for a challenge playthrough at some point, like using the Chaos Cloak for all of Plague of Shadows. In an update, a few more were added to Treasure Trove because of that Arby's promotion, which is, uh, interesting. One is a text change code, another replaces some sprites. They're, they're neat. One more thing about cheat codes, though. The reason a pumpkin appears when you activate a cheat is a reference to the phrase Cheater Cheater Pumpkin Eater. I did not pick up on that until doing research. Plague of Shadows' final boss is in Plague Knight's head. A common theory is that the Plague of Shadows' final boss takes place all in Plague Knight's head. Everything vanishes before he fights his Shadow Clone, and if the clone isn't attacked for a certain amount of time, they will state that Plague Knight's resolve is steadfast and that there is hope. Perhaps this reference shows Plague Knight using patience to overcome the hastiness he had initially when he was creating the ultimate potion. The form of the Corrupted Essence looks like a twisted and monstrous version of Plague Knight, showing his wicked side or perhaps what he imagines he may become if he used the potion. It all seems plausible with the reaction Plague and Mona have after. Propeller Knight is pan slash by. We see in the ending of Shovel of Hope, Propeller Knight surrounded by at least a woman and a man who are in love with him because of the little heart animation, regardless of Propeller Knight's selected gender. This implies that Propeller Knight flirts with both genders. Johnny Spectre. This was Spectre Knight's beta name before the name Donovan was settled on. It's referenced in-game as the cheat code needed to start Spectre of Torment with the Donovan set. Not much else to say here, just a cool reference to something unused. Dyna Knight Similar to Johnny Spectre, Dyna Knight is another unused name, this time for Plague Knight. It was dropped likely because Mole Knight already had a theme of demolition, so the developers went for a mad science theme for Plague Knight to differentiate them. Mole Knight still mistakes Plague Knight for a demolitionist in Plague of Shadows, and in the end of King of Cards, Plague Knight does aid in the demolition of the Houses of Justice, so there are still references to the early concept. Plane Speedrun Skip A relatively well-known skip in the Planes of Passage stage that Shovel Knight and Plague Knight can do. 
It skips a few screens, and it was left in by the developers as they thought seeing the skip being performed was pretty cool. Despite how it looks, it is very precise and difficult to do, but I imagine it'd be handy for the hurry-up achievements when pulled off. Plague of Shadows Story Discrepancies Plague of Shadows takes place at the same time as Shovel of Hope. Plague Knight, depending on the context, either shows up at a location before or after Shovel Knight. For example, Plague Knight takes over the armor outpost after Shovel Knight has done everything there, while Plague Knight beats stages before Shovel Knight since he finds the relics first, and trades them with Chester for Arcana, who later sells the relics to Shovel Knight. However, there are two instances where the two appear at the same time, the Explodatorium boss fights, and the Tower of Fate boss rush. Here the events are different, either Shovel Knight wins fairly and fights the Order by himself, or Plague Knight beats Shovel Knight, Shovel Knight cheats, and Plague Knight fights the Order and loses to Shovel Knight again because of cheating. When asked about this, the developers at Yacht Club said that the differences were because of the perspectives of the characters, each one perhaps making themselves out as the more heroic person. It's fairly interesting, and it would have been cool to see the dynamic between Spectre of Torment and King of Cards. King Knight is the first knight. As seen from King of Cards, King Knight is the first knight placed in the Order of No Quarter, and King Knight is referred to be already serving the Enchantress when fought in Spectre of Torment. This is all blatant in game, but my question is can we determine the canonical order all the knights were recruited? At the end of King of Cards, we see Propeller Knight helping the Enchantress destroy the airship, meaning he is likely the second one recruited. Next we see Plague Knight demolishing the Houses of Justice, likely meaning that he has been ordered to do this by the Enchantress. Mole Knight, Bowler Knight, and Tinker Knight are seen making their way to the Tower of Fate together, showing they were defeated by Spectre Knight and are headed to accept the invitation at relatively the same time. And finally, Treasure Knight is seen taming Tifalon in the deep ocean by installing the treasure chest trap. And when encountered by Spectre Knight, Tifalon has said trap. This means that Treasure Knight was the second to last knight added to the order, counting Spectre Knight. This makes sense with the dialogue in Spectre Torment, as when talking to Treasure Knight for the first time, Yari is willing to join, likely because he has heard of how much power the order has accumulated already. Thus, the order of the Order of No Quarter's formation is King Knight, then Propeller and Plague, then Polar, Mole, and Tinker, then Treasure, and finally Spectre. Luan is red. A pretty common theory among fans. It states that red is Luan after dying from the Shield Knight encounter, losing his memory of Donovan and Rise, and only remembering the woman he presumably had Rise with, now known as Scarlet. Red also has a stockpile of curios to give perhaps old adventuring gear that's been given a new makeover. And finally, Red is the one who gives Spectre the Donovan set, specifically at the place Donovan became Spectre Knight. Maybe the one fell here too and reawoke as Red? It's an interesting theory, but it's still weird that Luan wouldn't recognize Donovan. Luan is bound to have seen Donovan with the face guard down at some point, right? Who knows, maybe Luan is the ghost in Spectre Knight's secret room. Hedge Farmer is Ryze's uncle. This is seen in Spectre of Torment's ending, where Ryze is dropped off at the house of the Hedge Farmer based on the shadows in the door. Plus, one of Ryze's attacks in Showdown is called the Hedge Spin, a move he could have learned from them or named as a tribute to them. It's a fact. Steam Achievement Percentages. This is referring to how the global Steam achievements for Treasure Trove are extremely low for ones associated with King of Cards, and Showdown. Granted, this does happen for other games that have content added years later, such as a similar situation with Cuphead and its DLC, and many are tied to the local multiplayer-focused Showdown, but it is still a little sad to see. Zubaz Zubaz was a scrapped Street Fighter 2 character that would later become a mascot character for Two Best Friends Play, a YouTube Let's Play series. Because of this, he would be put in various games under the alias The Baz, to avoid potential trademark trouble through Kickstarter backer rewards and similar means. One of those games was Shovel Knight as a director for a day character, which is how we got the amazing Baz we have today. 
It seems that the little-known bits from scrap concepts were fully incorporated into Baz, such as the use of a whip and storm powers of some sort. Wisdom's curly hair. It's a bit hard to see in-game, but in their official artwork they do in fact have curly hair, which could easily be mistaken as shadows from their big hats. Mull Knight's bread. Inspector of Torment, after beating Lost City, Mull Knight will appear in the dining hall and say this dialogue. Are they bringing my bread? I asked for bread. Everything up here takes forever. Could you go ask about the bread? It's just some funny dialogue that's rarely talked about. He never did get that bread, did he? It's not a shovel. It's canonically called a shovel blade, not a shovel. This comes from dialogue from the Shovel Smith in Sony versions of Treasure Trove when presented with the reward from fighting Kratos, the Gravedigger Shovel, stating that not all shovels can be forged into shovel blades, but for all intents and purposes, it is a shovel. Pig Hog became Terrapin. Pig Hog was a scrapped concept early on. They were an armored warthog that Shovel Knight would have rode upon throughout levels. I imagine the idea was similar to how Yoshi worked in Super Mario World, a power-up that you could find in the level and take with you from level to level. For whatever reason, they decided to scrap the idea for Shovel of Hope, but did end up giving another spade-wielding crusader a rather unique steed in the form of Black Knight and Terrapin. Shield Knight's hair. Here is some art depicting Shield Knight without her helmet. A real Finn from Adventure Time sort of deal. Mr. Hat is omnipotent. From what is shown of Mr. Hat in Treasure Trove, it seems he could be potentially be all-powerful. With every hat he gets, he gains power from it. It isn't shown the degree of how much power he gets from the hat till Showdown, where in his story mode ending, he takes a gold armor's helmet and essentially has most of their moveset. This means that by taking the hat of anyone, he will be able to perform most, if not all, of their abilities. And, based on the sheer size of the back of his store, he has accumulated a lot of power already. He's like Kirby, a fellow hat and power collector that, when you think about them too much, you realize they have or can kill gods. Accountant Knight. This I'm not too sure on, actually. I believe it may be about an easter egg in Spectre Knight's challenge mode. In Dirt Claw Dash, by going to the right of the starting area, you will find Treasure Knight in a secret room, calculating his taxes and wages. It might also be an inside name for Treasure Knight by the devs, but I couldn't find anything that confirmed this. However, I swear I've heard the name Accountant Knight used before, so if anyone knows what else it could mean, maybe leave it in the comments. Shield Knight dies. It isn't said in-game if Shield Knight is alive by the end of Shovel of Hope. We see her walk on screen and lay down next to Shovel Knight so you could interpret that as her dying next to him, but that's just kind of morbid in a downer ending. Plague Knight is a bird. This is a semi-popular headcanon. Not much else to it aside from some of Plague Knight's animations being bird-like and the Plague Doctor mask he wears. Mole Knight's Thumb Mole Knight's thumbs are seemingly missing in almost all his sprites in Treasure Trove. The only ones where the thumbs are present are in the sprites where he is ready to play Justice in an animation part of his reveal trailer for Showdown. What's even stranger is his thumb is like all his other fingers in the Justice animation, where in Showdown it is lit on fire. I guess that would make sense since all his fingers light on fire during his eruption attack. Still, it's odd that his thumbs are missing. Maybe the sprite artist just forgot to put them in initially, and with recent sprites they decided to finally add them? Or maybe the sprite would look messy with the thumbs added. What's weirder is when looking at the spin-offs, the sprites for Mole Knight are also inconsistent regarding his thumbs except for Dig, where his thumbs are present in his aqua armor at all times. Chester's Eyes this, I think, is referring to a common misinterpretation of Chester's sprite. To summarize, the black inside of his mouth is seen as his eyes, and the lining detailing his chin is a mustache and mouth. However, this could also refer to never seeing Chester without his headband, but by that logic every knight except Shield Knight and Prism Knight should be in this slot as well. 
Princess Shield Knight Shield Knight's original concept was just a generic MacGuffin character for the player to get. She was changed to something more interesting because it was rather cliché and the developers wanted to show a team dynamic between Shovel and Shield. This dynamic was worked into the final boss, making it feel rewarding to finally unite the two. Interestingly, there is a leftover sprite of a princess in the game files, a remnant of the old princess concept. Percy's Hands Percy is inconsistently depicted with hands and hooves. In his official artwork, he has hands. In the in-game sprites, he has hooves. This piece of art for Valentine's Day has him depicted with hooves, yet this stream from Yacht Club says he has hands. Percy has hands. Which one is it? King Knight is Pridemore's heir. This theory states that King Knight is the son of Pridemore, and that the reason King Knight's mom and Pridemore hit it off so well is that they were previously in a relationship. Pridemore refers to King Knight as son multiple times as well, and while that may be the way he refers to some people, it's not often seen. Kinda makes King of Cards even more tragic if you think about it. Shovel Knight is a 3D game. Shovel Knight was built in a 3D game engine instead of a 2D one, with the sprites in the game appearing on separate layers. There's a great video by Boundary Break about this topic which I have linked in the description. Spectre's High Heeled Boots These can be found inside Spectre's secret room. They're the smallest thing ever, so it's forgivable if you didn't notice them till now. The developers said in a livestream that they are specifically mage boots. Was Donovan a mage before he was an adventurer, or did he just steal them like Luan in his... fucking massive boots? Eh, probably just stole them. Scrapped Crafting System the original idea of how Plague of Shadows would work is, at checkpoints, Plague Knight could craft different arcana and temporary health upgrades, using materials he could find across the campaign, and he could level up said items by purchasing better recipes at the lab. This idea sounds interesting, but was scrapped for multiple reasons. For one, the crafting process slowed down the game as the player made their way through a menu, to make each arcana one at a time, and since they were consumables, this would happen a lot. The types of materials you would get would be linear because of the level structure, so you would end up making the same-ish items at the same point as everyone else, unless you backtrack to another stage for more materials. Finally, the mechanic was punishing due to all your materials and crafted items being dropped on death, and needing to be retrieved like gold in the final game. Some remnants of the system still exist though, such as the tonics as temporary health upgrades, and some arcana in that stage of development, also appearing in the final game. Spectre Knight's Gun Here is some official art of Spectre Knight with a gun for Spectre of Torment. It was likely scrapped since Plague of Shadows established the playable bosses having very similar abilities to their boss fights, and going against Spectre of Torment's overall movement feel with dash slashing and wall climbing. Essence's Official Names In a catch-and-you'll-miss-it piece of dialogue, Plague Knight says the name of one of the essences after returning from the Iron Whale, the Essence of Avarice. This means the other essences would be named but aren't. I wonder what their names would be. Going by the only named one, it would be the Knight's strongest trait or a trait they exemplify, such as Stoicism or Ingenuity. Mole Knight is a blorb. Think about it. He constantly emits fire from his body and can turn into a slime green during Spectre of Torment and King of Cards. The slime blocks are a constant element used in Lost City level design, such as with Big Bodo, and changing magma into slime. He could just be a more advanced blorb. Although he is also literally called a mole in Dig, so this theory could be incorrect. But that same scene also mentions his claws are detachable. Scrapped Moon Level In the development of King of Cards, it was planned for King Knight to go to the moon at some point, likely an homage to the moon level in DuckTales NES, but it was cut for the sake of development time. In its place is the Fairy Glade and the Gigacardia boss, as the Gigacardia boss was going to be the boss of the moon, and the Fairy Glade has a background fitting of a moon level. 
Propeller's pirate rival. My best guess is this might have had to do with Propeller's campaign proposal, but there isn't a mention of having a rival there. However, this could just refer to either Cooper or Treasure Knight. Cooper, because as seen in King of Cards, they knew each other before, and it makes sense to have the two aerial vessel captains be rivals. And Treasure Knight, because of the events of Treasure Knight's showdown campaign, where they play a friendly game against each other, and having a nautical motif fitting a pirate. Luan is Phantom Striker. An interesting theory for sure. Both characters use swords, and the hatred of Spectre Knight directed by Phantom Striker would be warranted since Donovan's actions resulted in both characters dying. But I don't think it quite works because the swords used by both characters are different, and Phantom Striker sees Dark Rise in their showdown campaign. Surely if it was Luan, he'd recognize that his son has been possessed by darkness, yet he makes no mention of his name, instead referring to them as just a child. Dark Rise also comments about Phantom Striker's age by calling them a mummy and grandpa, while the epilogue says Phantom Striker is past his prime, so he's likely just a veteran adventurer. Unique Propeller Knight Key Art In this poster image, we see a unique piece of art of Propeller Knight that is not used anywhere else. What makes this weird is that the poster uses art of Shovel Knight that exists separately from the poster. Now that I look at it more, I think that image of Mole Knight may be unique too. Glenn Seatlen. This is the name of Ryze's father, according to the creator of him, Seizui. It could have maybe been used as a stand-in for Luan at some point, but regardless, the character was named Luan in Shovel Knight. I imagine they still have the same last name, though. Super Skeleton is the worst. The only thing I was able to find about the phrase is it is a placeholder text for the dialogue before Spectre Knight's boss fight. The source of this information, however, is a comment on a Reddit post from a now-deleted user, so take this with a grain of salt. Though this could also just be referring to the super skeleton guarding Spectre's secret room being incompetent. Pigeon Luan this refers to some off-putting concept art of Luan, where he was for some reason more... bird-like. Yeah. The Order of No Quarter lasted less than two weeks. Since Shovel Knight started getting ready for his quest after his showdown campaign, and the showdown campaigns take place just before Spectre Knight joins the Order of No Quarter as the final member, it is safe to say that Shovel of Hope could begin mere hours after Spectre of Torment finished. Assuming each level takes one day to complete, as seen with the campfire scenes, then it took Shovel Knight exactly nine days to dismantle the Order of No Quarter. This either shows how powerful the Order is due to how much chaos they cause in the valley in such a short amount of time, or how incompetent the Order is by being bested by one night in just a little over a week. Dig the vote was rigged in King Knight's favor. This states that because King Knight was the boss character first shown off to the public, that he got an unfair advantage when it came to the Dig the Vote since he was most well known compared to all the other characters. This theory doesn't hold up as much when you consider he placed third in the poll, but that third place was ahead by a large margin within the vote. France doesn't exist. Just think about it for a sec, and let it sink in. And that's everything on this iceberg. I will try to post a corrections video if I made some mistakes, and if I find some new information about stuff I was confused about. Uh, with that being said, uh, maybe subscribe? I'm honestly not sure what else I'm going to post on this channel, but... I don't know, maybe stick around for it. <laughs>